Costa Rica and I really wanted to film this until I got back home to Canada but my results have been in waiting in my email for like three days we read Devon's last night and now like curiosity is just getting the best of me so I'm going to read my 23andMe DNA test results right now DNA test time we gotta fill this to here with spit so really I don't know how long this is gonna take me I think this is going to take a really long time. <laughs> oh my god, this is going to take a long time. Think of warheads. Okay. <laughs> you don't want this, Maddie. You have to make the spit go up to the line, not the bubbles of your spit. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. We're almost there, actually. It's not the whole tube. Like I No, I know. Really you. Thought. It looks <laughs> like it's way more than it is. <laughs> Maddie's like, what are you doing? I know. She thinks I have food. I know for some reason. You don't want it. I think I've exceeded. The line? Yeah. I think. Well, I mean, it is bubbles. Ish. Let me see. Uh, I'd give it one more spit for good luck. Okay. So Shelby, what do you think might come up in your DNA? I don't know. I'm thinking Italian. You're like, thinking Italian. My grandmother's father was from Italy, and okay. he didn't speak English. So I'm thinking some Italian there, like maybe one eighth. Okay, it's good. Now take the top okay. and close it. Push it closed tightly. Okay. And then that liquid and is. Oh, close it all the way. Hold it closed and shake it for five seconds. Okay. Then we gotta go change the top. Cause you have to put okay, the small top like on. Leaking. Really? It smells like alcohol. Well, it's something to preserve the saliva. I don't know what it is. You gotta put this top on is instead. Is this the top? Yeah. Oh my god, are all oh gross. <laughs> blue side down? Or blue side uh, up? Blue side up, I guess. Whatever one screws in. Look at that. There you go. And Just then you put it in your bag. I'm excited for these results. What about this? You just leave that in there with it, I guess. And then you close it, you pull off the blue stuff, and oh, it, it like sticks. Sticky? Yeah. Yep. DNA specimen. And then you just put it back in your little box here. And then you put, yeah. oh, you got a little air in there. That's all right. Pop it in there, and then we send it off. Well, you have to register. Oh. Do you think I can register on my phone? Yeah, I think you just need okay. to go online. You just need to set up an email. Perfect. So now we register and we wait. I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know why, but I kind of am. Okay, so we're going to start with Ancestry. What? So my full makeup is 41.7% British and Irish. 19.4% French and German, and 10.2% Italian. 97.4% European, British and Irish, UK and Ireland. 19.4% French and German from France. And then, oh my God, I'm 10% Italian. <laughs> now we know why I'm such a handsy talker, you guys. That's a 10% Italian sneak it out. Oh my god, that's so cool. I'm 3.4% Spanish and Portuguese and 0.5% Western Asian and North African. 0.5% Native American. This is freaking cool. I have 1,302 relatives and 10 close relatives. 100% of your relatives have French and German ancestry. You've identified 241 genetic variants that can be traced to the Neanderthals. I don't think that that's that interesting. I have zero Neanderthal variants associated with straight hair. Yep. We're moving on to health and traits. This is the part that makes me feel a little bit like anxious. I don't want to see anything bad, hopefully. Okay, I have to review the tutorials first. Hereditary hemochromatosis. 
Variant detected, but not likely an increased risk. So that is a genetic condition characterized by absorption of too much dietary iron. It can lead to iron overload, which can cause damage to joints, organs. Interesting. So I have one of the two variants for this. I don't really like that. Oh, okay. People who have only this variant are not likely at risk of developing iron overload related to hereditary hemochromatosis. So I think that means I'm okay, but it says you could pass this variant on to your children if your partner has a variant linked to hereditary hemochromatosis, which Devin does not. So we're good there. Oh, great. Hereditary thrombophilia. A predisposition, predisposition to developing harmful blood clots, most commonly formed in the legs and can travel to the lungs. Uh, I have one of the two genetic variants tested for this, so I have to be careful not to get blood clots. I feel sick about this, kind of. You have a slightly increased risk of developing harmful blood clots based on your genetic result. You might want to discuss this with a healthcare professional, especially if you have other risk factors. At least one of your parents is also expected to have this variant. In addition, each of your siblings has at least a 50% chance of having this variant and each of your children has a 50% chance of inheriting this variant from you. Oh my god. I have to be careful. I'm nervous. Late onset Alzheimer's disease, slightly increased risk. Shelby, you have one copy of the E4 variant we tested. People with this variant have a slightly increased risk of developing late onset Alzheimer's disease. Lifestyle, environment, and other factors can also affect your risk. My grandfather on my dad's side did have Alzheimer's, so... Oh, God. However, most people with this result do not develop late-onset Alzheimer's. So... Oh. I mean, it says late-onset, so maybe I'll be really, really old? I don't know. This was, honestly... This was the one thing that I was scared to see because I watched my grandfather go through Alzheimer's and it was the one thing that I've always had in the back of my mind like that I was worried sick that I might get someday and um, let's just hope that I don't. So late onset Alzheimer's develops after 65. Greetings, Shelby from the future here. You guys know that I try to be as real as possible whenever I make a video and talk to you guys so I didn't think this video would be entirely real or true if I didn't put this in here. If you are someone like me who has anxiety and you know you have a tendency to worry and overthink and drive yourself a little bit crazy in your thoughts, then I really urge you to think long and hard before agreeing to receive all of the health components of one of these tests. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't have received all this information because I'm not gonna lie, I drove myself crazy for three days, Googling everything I could Google, listening to podcasts and reading articles, and honestly just making myself sick. But what's done is done at this point, and uh, I don't know, I feel like I just have no choice but to try to face all of this with an empowered mindset. So I came to find out that sleep is really crucial for anyone who has a variant for developing Alzheimer's or just people in general, because when we sleep, especially when we have a deep sleep, that's when our brain has this cleaning mechanism where it gets rid of all the built up plaque that has been built up throughout the day. If you are not getting enough sleep or you're not getting enough deep sleep, then it seems like this plaque just continues and continues to grow until maybe someday you develop Alzheimer's. So if you know that you have a variant, then really make sure you're getting good quality sleep every night, at least eight hours. I've really been making an effort to make sure that I listen to my body and give it the rest that it needs. And I've also been trying to keep my mind really active. So I downloaded this app called Elevate. This is not sponsored by Elevate in any way. I paid for it myself. I just really like the app and I think that it's a great way to keep your mind sharp. Another thing that I've made part of my morning routine is the Wim Hof method. So I've been practicing the Wim Hof breathing method and, and I'm working myself up to doing the cold therapy part of it. I'm hoping that this is going to 
help me get better at managing my anxiety and worry and make me realize that I can control a whole lot more than I think I can. And overall, I just want to be able to push myself a little bit more outside of my comfort zone in everyday life so that nothing holds me back. I've kind of developed a little morning routine for myself that helps to kind of set me up for the day and make me feel centered and ready. And I don't know, to tell you the truth, if it's going to work, but I know that it makes me feel a little bit better knowing that I'm doing something for myself, for my future. So it helps with my mindset and knowing that I'm doing everything that I can to live my best life. I don't have any variants for any other diseases, so I guess that's good. Just blood clots and maybe Alzheimer's. Great. Gotta take the good with the bad here, I guess. Okay. Um, let's go into wellness. Alcohol flush reaction, unlikely to flush. Caffeine consumption, likely to consume more. That is true. Deep sleep, less likely to be a deep sleeper. I think that's false, actually. Um, predisposed to weigh about average. Likely intolerant to lactose. I knew it. Muscle composition, uncommon in elite power athletes. So that means I'm never gonna be an athlete, which like, I think we saw that coming. Not a big sports girl here. Likely to weigh more on a high saturated fat diet and sleep movement, likely average or less movement. I feel like that's false. I move a lot when I sleep. Okay, let's check traits. <laughs> less likely to be able to match a musical pitch. That is true. Likely can smell asparagus odor, probably. Bitter taste, likely can't taste. Bunions, less likely than average to have had a bunion, um, likely no cheek dimples, slightly higher odds of disliking cilantro. I actually love cilantro. Um, likely no cleft chin, about a 50-50% chance of dandruff. Likely detached earlobes, that's true. Likely wet earwax. Likely blue or green eyes, I have green eyes, so that's true. Uh, more likely than the average person to be afraid of heights. Now that's interesting because a few days ago, Devin and I did the Hanging Bridges um, Park here in Costa Rica, and I was fine going over the bridges. It was Devin who's terrified of heights. Devin's deathly afraid of heights, and this is really freaking high. So he's a little bit panicking, but. I didn't think we we're gonna be that high up. You got this. You did it, you did it, honey. You did it. <sighs> high five. Oh. Yeah, you did it. Face your fears. I hated that. I can't do that. Oh. <laughs> Smoking. But his report said that he was not afraid of heights. So interesting. More likely to have a fear of public speaking. That is true. Likely ring finger is longer. More likely than average to have flat feet. That is true. Okay, this next one. Freckles. Likely little freckling. No. More likely to experience hair photo bleaching. Likely straight or wavy hair. We've got wavy. Less likely to have thick hair. That is not true. I have really thick hair. More likely to prefer vanilla over chocolate ice cream. That is false. Chocolate always. It says I likely have dark hair. More likely to hate chewing sounds. Oh yeah. I remember being a kid and like lashing out at people for chewing around me. It would drive me insane. Likely bitten more often than others. For mosquito bite frequency, I knew it. More likely to experience motion sickness. Yep. I was motion sick on the airplane, on the drive here in Costa Rica. Uh, likely very little baby hair. Likely no photic sneeze reflex. Likely no red hair. Likely lighter skin. More likely to have stretch marks. Likely prefer salty. Likely big toe longer. Likely no unibrow. Likely to wake up around 8.34 a.m. No widow's peak. I've got a lot of cousins out there who I've never heard of. I want to know where they all live. Anyways, there's 53 pages of cousins here. That's wild. So I have a first cousin who was born in 1963 who lives in Weymouth, Massachusetts, United States. And I've never heard of this person and I don't really understand how she could be a first cousin. Oh, it's on my mom's side. Her parents grew up on Cape Breton Island and then moved to Boston, so I know. Oh, okay, okay, I get it now. All right, you guys, that brings us to the end of this 23andMe results videos. I got this for Christmas 
from my mother-in-law because I was so curious about what my results would be and whether or not there would be Italian in there and we've got a whole 10% which is pretty cool. A little bit stressing about the increased risk for late onset Alzheimer's, not gonna lie. I'll definitely be doing everything I can to make sure that doesn't happen. It's in my power. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I hope that you thought this was an interesting video. Did you ever do one of these DNA tests? If you did, let me know how it went, what you thought of it, what your experience was. I would love to hear it. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye guys.